Hi, I'm Candace, and I'm with Grow Local today. And if you picked up one of the in-ground packages that we have on offer, these are some of the things that you might get. This is how you might plan out your garden. This is mine. I'm going to show you a few things and how I've got mine sorted, sort of, but it might change, it might not. But for starters, I already have garlic that I planted in October. It's coming up beautifully, I think, and it's probably going to be ready to eat and harvest in July. I've put some alyssum in here. That is a lovely little plant. It attracts beneficial insects. They come for the nectar and then they go off looking for protein like aphids. So they're delightful to have in your garden. We have carrot seeds. Now I know that they have a bunch of different carrot seeds that you could be getting. And you might get purple ones, you might get white ones, you might get orange ones. These ones happen to be yellow. And for these, I'm going to start them at this end of the bed, just because I can. And I've got some bigger things I'm going to talk about later on the other end. But I get good sun in here. And it typically comes over this way. I get a little bit of shade. But for the most part, I'm going to get 8 to 12 hours of sun on this bed. So I always call this one my hot one. And I'm going to take my little seeds. Because carrot seeds, you can start really early and you can plant them really late. You can usually start planting these early March. And stop planting them maybe the middle of September. They have the added bonus of being able to overwinter if it's not too damp. The colder it gets, the sweeter that your carrots will get. The starch in them turns to sugar. So if you have a hard time getting your kids to eat carrots, let them get cold in the ground. You might be quite pleasantly surprised. The other thing that you can do with carrots in this row if you're trying to separate it up is put in some radish seeds. The radishes are going to come up within a month and by the time they're ready your little carrot seeds are just going to be starting to sprout. These guys do take a long time to come up. Don't think you've done anything wrong. Don't panic. One of the things you're going to want to make sure is that the soil's not really high in nitrogen. That's the one for the good green leafy growth and if it's too rich you get these fantastic looking green tops all over the place and these little threads for carrots or you might get hairy carrots or you might get those little funny forked ones that everybody always shows you on Facebook. You may get calendula. Now this is a really pretty plant or a really pretty flower. It's edible, the flowers, you can toss them in your salads. Um, if you get into herbology, you can make creams and stuff too because it's really beneficial for you. So I'm going to tuck a couple in here. And all I'm doing is making a hole with my fingers. There's nothing fancy about this, you guys. I didn't tell you. When you're taking plants out of the pots, you don't want to break the stems. There's a lot of plants that if you break the stem, it's just not going to grow for you. It's dead. You killed it. You can pull it out by the leaf because if you lose a leaf, chances are the plant's going to grow a new one. But the best thing to do, especially if you're teaching kids, is take your plant pot, gently squeeze. All you're doing is trying to loosen the soil from the edge of the pot. And then you're going to make an L with your hands. I tell the kids it's L for love because plants love to be protected in here. Place it on the top of the pot. You want to keep your fingers straight because when you turn it over, you want this to be like a plate, not a bowl. Kids have a tendency to not be able to let go if they do it that way. So make it like a plate, pull the top off, and you have your plants. Now these you can gently separate. Plants are a lot tougher than you think, so don't freak, don't be too worried, and just pop them in the hole. It's another thing is, if you're doing this, keep your bed nice and short. I would typically be working on the other side so I don't have to stretch so much, but you want to be able to just reach the middle of your bed comfortably. There. So now I have carrots and I have calendula. And on over here, I have another kale. Now this one's called, and I can never say it right, so I'm just going to call it how I know it, dinosaur kale. And you can see it's got really good roots on the bottom. If you have a vegetable and you take it out of the pot and the roots are really congested and it, they're starting to spiral around, don't be afraid. Just 
tease them out. All you're doing is letting that plant know that there's a whole wide world for it to go spread out in and get more nutrients. This guy will probably grow to be three feet tall. It's just gonna bush out like that. So it's just brilliant looking. And those calendula are gonna look fantastic in front of it too. Then what have I got? Oh, I have beans. Now these ones are a, called borlotti and they're a drying bean. These I'm not gonna plant yet. It's just, the soil's too cold. If I put it in there, they get damp and then they're just gonna rot on me. So it's, you can try to get a jump on that ahead. If you think it's gonna be really nice weather, you can always take a chance and plant them and know that if the weather doesn't cooperate, you're just gonna have to plant them again. These guys, I'm gonna make a row along this side of my bed because I get an awful lot of sun this way and I don't want it to shade the rest of my garden. Now, having said that they're gonna be 17 feet in length, quite possibly, I am gonna put some sticks in here going straight up. I'm gonna put one across like this and back down in this way. So hopefully I will have them trailing from one bed over to the other. And then I have kind of a little arbor if I want, if it's a really hot day. I can plant a tomato in front of it. Again, this is one that I'm not gonna plant until the end of May because I don't want it stunted. I don't want it in the ground too early. So they sulk, they pout, and they're just not happy campers. I have chives in here already. These little guys are garlic chives and this one's regular. And you can see it's already starting to get the bulbs, the flower heads on them. Kids absolutely love garlic chives. Don't know what it is about them, but they will just sit there and just keep eating them and eating them and eating them. When these bloom, you can actually eat the flower tops too. Try not to eat all of them though. They are another plant that attracts beneficial insects to your garden that are gonna start eating the bugs that you don't want in there. There are a couple of little onions that you might get in your packet. Again, L for love after you've made sure the soil is really nice and loose on the pot. I'm gonna tuck it in here. And I'm not gonna bother to separate these onions because if they get too close to being buddy-buddy, they just push each other out of the way and still grow nice and big. On this side, I'm gonna do some squash and some pumpkins. There is an acorn squash and it is absolutely lovely, stores really well. These are your scallopini or patty pan. I don't know if you guys are gonna get these either, but these are awesome. They're about, when they're about two to three inches, just pop them in the frying pan with a little bit of butter and you'll scarf them down. This is, and I had to show it to you. This is my renegade pumpkin. I'm not sure what kind it is, I think it's a big warty one, but I'm not positive. I used it for decoration and I left it in the garden on top of a pot. Well, it decomposed and all the seeds have come out and I probably have one, two, three, four. I've got six plants here and this is what it's gonna look like for a bit. But I can take these, you can still see the old pumpkin squash, pumpkin seed shell. And if I put this one in here, I know this guy is going to need a lot of room. So he's going to grow up. And if he's anything like last year, he's going to be about four feet wide and anywhere up to 10 feet long. So he's going to grow out this way. My husband won't have to mow so much. And life will be good. So I think that's probably it. I know that there are other plants that you might be getting. Um, you might get a borage. And that's a lovely flowering plant too. It tastes like cucumbers and attracts all sorts of insects. If you look over here, I actually have a renegade potato coming up and I'm thinking that must be from the compost. I've got these all in. I think I'm done for today. I'm just gonna give it a squirt with water after you guys leave. <laughs> and then we're good to go. So thank you for joining me.